Hi, I'm Konstantin Baum, Master of Wine, and today we're discovering a fairly unknown wine producing country together. And when I say together, I really mean it, as I don't know all that much about this place, except that it has friendly inhabitants, lots of lakes, maple syrup, and ice wine. Yes, I'm talking about Canada, so let's do this. A. Eh? Canada is the second largest country in the world, but its wine production is relatively limited and the wines aren't widely available. But a lot of you guys are from Canada and I want to learn more about your home country. My 1985 edition of the World Atlas of Wine states that there are 9000 hectares of vineyards planted in Canada, but there is not really a chapter about Canadian wine. In a few sentences, you writes that people didn't really take the wines coming out of Canada serious, but he has high hopes for the future of Canadian wine. Similar to Germany, Canadian wine has benefited from climate change. As temperatures have increased, the quality of the wine has also improved. But pretty much all of the wine production is in the south and close to the coast, as temperatures in winter are less severe in those areas. In total, Canada's 12,600 hectares of vineyards split up in between 616 different wineries. And the most important wine growing regions are the Niagara Peninsula in southern Ontario and the Okanagan Valley in southern British Columbia. Okanagan? 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 Okanagan. 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 Okay. Okanagan. I hope that's correct. So from what I understand, there are basically two important territories in Canada when it comes to wine. One is British Columbia and the other one is Ontario. British Columbia is on the west coast north of Washington state, which is one of the most important wine growing states in the US. And it has 4,500 hectares of vineyards. And the most planted grape varieties are Chardonnay, Pinot Gris, Pinot Noir and Merlot, a bit of a mix, but more cool climate grape varieties. Ontario lies north of Chicago and New York. It's the biggest with 6,900 hectares of vineyards. And it again focuses mainly on grape varieties like Riesling, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir and Cabernet Franc. So grape varieties that are more accustomed to cooler climates. Quebec and Nova Scotia are also notable wine growing regions, but they mainly focus on frost resistant hybrid grape varieties, such as Frontenac, Vidal, Seval Blanc, and my favorite, Lucy Kuhlmann. Great name. Since the early 1990s, Canada has established itself as the most consistent source of ice wine made from grapes frozen naturally in the vineyard. It is basically produced in every producing region, but more than 90% comes from Ontario. And I wonder how much of that is actually in a skill. I'm not going to go into ice wine as I've done that in the past. Instead, I'm going to focus on the dry white and red wines from Canada. Leon has put together a selection and he tried to get in as many of your recommendations, but it was kind of tricky. Most of those wines weren't available over here and we kind of had to make do with what we had. So I'm starting off with the 2019 50th parallel estate Chardonnay from Okanagan Valley in British Columbia. The winery is called 50th degree parallel because that's the degree parallel running through the estate. It's the same degree parallel that you'll find in the Rheingau for example. There's quite a lot of talk in the wine world in general about degrees parallel, but I don't really think they are very useful. They're not really a very useful reference point because the climate is influenced by so many other factors that it doesn't really matter on which degree parallel you are. So this winery was established in 2004 by two businessmen. They are now farming roughly 25 hectares of vineyards, predominantly planted to Burgundian grape varieties. And this Chardonnay is made in a pretty classic way, fermented in barrel. There's some malolactic fermentation going on in oak and the wine is aged for 10 to 12 months in barrel. So let's taste it. So this combines caramel popcorn flavors with lemon aromas, like a lemon tart, almost, almost creamy in flavor. On the palate, it's actually quite fresh. The acidity is still quite vibrant and strong. Um, it feels like there's quite a bit of body, but it's broken up by the acidity. So it's actually pretty nice. I mean, it's, it's a well-balanced Chardonnay. The oak is a little bit too obvious for my taste, but there's tension there. So it's interesting. So I'm going to rate this 87 points. I think it's a really well-made wine, pretty good. It's not outstanding, but 
it is fun and I like the freshness in the finish. The next one is the 2017 Lakeview Cellars Viognier from Niagara Peninsula. The climate in Niagara Peninsula is quite different to the climate along the coast. It is much more variable and in winter it can get really really cold like minus 16 degrees celsius on average in january but in summer it gets warm again so it can go up to 22 degrees celsius on average in august so there's much more of a range and those really cold temperatures they can be dangerous to the vine so the vines may actually freeze and die this winery was founded in 1991 and they're working with the grape variety viognier which i think is actually quite an interesting grape variety to work with it is difficult to make really good viognier because the wines tend to be a little bit flabby and too rich if they are harvested too late and if they are harvested too early they can just be like boring okay this is not really great it is but it's not overly powerful or boring it's just it feels like it's old it almost has petrol character here there's also some flavor of passion fruit, but overripe passion fruit. And yeah, it's all a little bit mushy. And there's a bit of um, orange character, which I find quite typical for Viognier. It doesn't feel like the wine is at its peak. It doesn't feel like the wine should have been aged for six years. On the plus side, it actually has a nice texture. The acidity is quite fresh and crisp. The alcohol is at 13%, so there's good balance there. But yeah, overall, I still don't really like it. So I'm going to rate it 79 points, but I think a more recent vintage would actually be more fun. This just, just isn't. Sorry. The next one is the 2018 Pearl Morissette Chamboulet Pinot Noir from the Niagara Peninsula. I don't know why, but Pearl Morissette sounds to me like the name of a folk singer from the 70s. But it's actually the last names of the two founders, Francois Morissette and Mel Pearl, who founded this winery in 2007. So this is a Pinot Noir aged in demi mui concrete tanks and barrels. And... I'm looking forward to tasting this. All right, this is a really light colored red wine. You know, Pinot Noir is a thin skinned grape variety, so it doesn't produce dark red wines in general, but this is very, very light. Oftentimes light colored wines aren't really regarded as high quality wines because color is often an indicator for ripeness and concentration. But this actually has quite a lot of flavor. I mean, it's quite complex. There's beautiful strawberry notes coming through cherry flavors, quite a lot of spice and, well, minty flavors also. And so it's actually pretty complex. On the color, it doesn't really show a lot of concentration. There's very little tannins, good freshness. But what I don't really like is the bitterness. So the tannins taste a little bit bitter, a little bit unripe, which is something that I don't really enjoy. Overall, I would say this is an interesting, different expression of Pinot Noir, maybe a little bit more classic in style, maybe reminiscent of what we used to produce in Germany in the past. And it is interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a nice, nice little red wine. I'm going to rate this 87 points. I think it is very good. It's not outstanding. And the bitterness, I mean, without the bitterness, I would have rated it a little higher, but that just kind of disturbed me. I tasted quite a few cool climate grape varieties, but now we're moving on to a classic Bordeaux blend. The 2018 Painted Rock Estate Red Icon, which is a blend of 56% Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Cabernet Sauvignon, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. So this winery follows a pretty classic Bordeaux recipe with pump overs and 18 months of aging in barriques with 30% new oak. The wine is pretty dark in color. It smells of blackberries, black currants, a little bit of vanilla and cinnamon. And it is quite nice. I mean, it's... Yeah, it's powerful, but not too powerful. On the palate, the tannins are grippy. The acidity is still fresh. There's quite a lot of texture there, quite a lot of yeah, freshness. This is 2018, so it still feels pretty young. I don't think this is a wine that you need to drink anytime soon. Yeah, solid. I'm going to rate this 90 points. I think it's really good. It's very interesting. It's a, it's a beautiful little wine. I don't know whether I would pick this out as a Canadian wine, as I'm not a Canadian wine expert, I probably wouldn't. And 
I don't really think it has all that much identity. The Pinot Noir that I had previously had a little bit more well, of its own character. And this is this feels like, like another Bordeaux blend. In summary, this was an interesting tasting, but it can only be the beginning. I need to taste more wines from Canada, that's for sure. And there's certainly something there. But I think those wines weren't necessarily the most representative selection of what there is in Canada. Next time we have to dig a little bit deeper. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like it down here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. My question of the day is, what do you think about Canadian wine? Have you ever tasted any? Let me know down below in the comments. I hope I see you guys again very soon. Until then, stay thirsty.